evening gang how's everybody doing it's about 10 minutes to 4 eastern time of course and I just had so much to share with you today uh, being in the house of the Lord today it's it's always awesome but today it was really extra special it was extra just extra anointed I, I don't know how else to put it and I'd love to get your feedback on what I'm about to share with you but I'd also love to hear from you guys you know as to what you learned today when when you were in the house of the Lord and I'm wondering most of all aside from whether or not you learned anything special from God's Word today when you were in his house but I'm wondering most of all what are you going to do in response to it today at Bethel Church we had the final um, sermon series the final sermon in the in the series of dangerous prayers and it really really spoke and in, on and involved something that I think we all have a really 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 hard time with and that's being obedient to God's call for our lives and what I mean is I'm going to share some of this with you what is our response when God calls us what's his response the sermon was entitled send me and I'll tell you God showed me things from it that I didn't think applied in this area and it's really working on my heart right now and I'm asking for your prayers on this and that's why I wanted to, to have you come join me in this today you see I'm gonna try to later on enclose a, a link to today's serv service uh, I don't know if they're gonna have it on here today but I'm gonna I've, I'm going to enclose the one uh, the link from Life Church when you go on there and you see this da uh, dangerous prayers you're gonna look under there's three there the last one is called send me click play on that and, and you're really gonna be anointed this was very powerful I don't know how else to describe it and I know I say that but it really truly was and how we respond to God's call in our lives is very important because it not only shows obedience but it shows I believe our, our faith in Christ and whether or not we trust him and sometimes I think this is one of the things that Pastor Rob was saying today I think sometimes when when God calls us when he's tapping us on the shoulder and saying hey uh, I've got something for you to do we're scared to do it because we think God wants us to do something that's that we won't like that that's you know a lot of people automatically think when when it involves answering God's call it's going to a foreign mission field some strange creepy place and you know that isn't always going to happen but God's calling us to something unique a very unique mission field and this is something I'll be honest I've been asking the Lord in my own life lately and I'm still asking it and I really greatly covet your prayers you see he goes into one of the things he goes into with this is our attitude in this area and sometimes we have the wrong attitude and he gives a couple of very good examples and and, and as a result we have the wrong responses some of the wrong responses that we give God when he calls us is either yeah I'm here I'm not going forget about it and the first example of this a very good example is Jonah uh, Jonah is basically called by God to go to preach to Nineveh and I'm gonna read out of the book of Jonah I hope no one minds too terribly but this is to me this is very important he says here now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai saying arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me what was Jonah's response here it is verse 3 but Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish Tarshish from the presence of the Lord 
and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And what's the Lord's response? But the Lord sent out a great wind unto the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. And I tell you, I, I was not expecting this example in, in, in this when it comes to this with 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 this send me. I, the first thing I'm thinking is of course Isaiah, but here he shows. God gives clear examples here of the wrong responses when God calls us. And here's the first one. Yeah, I'm right here, but I'm not going. I refuse to go. This was Jonah's response. And I believe, if you want to really delve into this, Jonah's response was because of two things. He was afraid, and he admits this later on in Jonah chapter 4, that the people of Nineveh would repent and come to and come and come to believe in God and that God would relent of of what he was planning and the reason why he didn't want Nineveh to hear this message was because he had a prejudice against them Israel and Syria major problems and here you've got that and Jonah's response is, I'm going to run from God. But God, you know, you've got, but Jonah, but God, <laughs> you know. Jonah, Jonah's response is, he goes in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. But the Lord's response is, uh, giving a powerful, sending a very powerful storm. And when are we going to learn to realize that we can't run from God? And this isn't anything, anything nasty. This is not... This is, this is not because, and I'm going to go into this a little more, this isn't because God's out to get us. But we can't outmaneuver God. We can't run from him. And many times God causes storms in our life to get us to obey because he loves us just too much to ignore our disobedience and sin. And here that's what happened. And just picture this. Because if you look in Jonah chapter 2, it was, it was a combination of repentance and, and ultimately saying, Lord, I'm, I'm through, I'm sorry, not just sorry, but I'm through running, I'm going to do what you want. And he was resigned to this. And just picture this, I hope you don't mind, I kind of made this, but this was something that Pastor Rob did. And I wish they had a video as well as audio of, of today's sermon. But see, this, is, this, this was Jonah, you know, you are here. And this, this can be also us. Sometimes God has to do something to get our attention. And oftentimes when that happens, it's, it's in a way that, you know, really blows our mind. And, and I've seen that in my own life. I don't know how else to describe it. And then there's another way of responding. Here I am, but send somebody else. And the perfect example of this is Moses of all people and what I encourage you guys to do is read Exodus chapter 3 and 4 when it comes to this you're going to see what I'm talking about here Moses if you look at you know if you're familiar with Moses he has lived the life. He was adopted into, into the royal Egyptian family. He's a part of the quote-unquote 1%. And he's living it up. But he sees one of his fellow Jews, his fellow Hebrews, being beaten by an Egyptian, and he immediately goes to that person's aid, and he kills the Egyptian. And he thinks, okay, I'm going to hide the body because I don't want to, you know, he's thinking maybe if I hide it, nobody will know. Well, there's talk, and he sees two Hebrews fighting with each other, and he goes to break it up. And their response is, pardon me here, you ever have hair in your mouth? Their response is, what, you're going to, you're going to kill us the way you killed the Egyptian? 
that scares the living daylights out of him, and he runs, and he spends 40 years running. He sets himself up in a whole new life with Jethro and his family, with Jethro's daughter Zipporah, and while there, God calls him. It says in Exodus 3, verse 1, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, and he led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. And this was funny. Pastor Rob said, and I thought this was really cool, he says, you know, sometimes when we run away from God or we think we're running away from God, God has a way of bringing us back to him. And that's what he was doing here. And also, no matter how far we can ever run from God, he's always near us. He's always there. He's always watching and knowing. And, and, and even despite our stupidity looking out for us, trust me. And the farther you run, the closer God is to you. And as I said here, God has a way of bringing you back. And this is what he does here. And he says to Moses in Exodus 3, verse 10, after he says, I'm hearing the cry of my, of my people, the torture, the anguish that they're going through. And he says, guess what? I, I'm sending a deliverer to them, and guess what? That deliverer is you. And he says to Moses, he says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. What's Moses' response? Verse 11. Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? He's like, what, me? I'm a nobody. I'm not worth this. He's trying to use logic as well. He's like, they're not going to believe me. Who, who, who am I you know, going to say that? that sent, you know, sent me. And then, of course, in verse 14, I am that I am. That's what he's going to, that's what God wants him to say. And he also says, in verse, in, in chapter 4, verse 1, Behold, I'm slow of speech. Excuse me. He says, he basically, first he says, they're not going to believe me. How are they going to believe me? So he gives Moses these signs, these ways to be able to say it. But he also says at one point, he says in verse 10, But Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And God says, I'll give you the words to say. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the word, you know. And... Ultimately, in the end, Moses says, you got the wrong person, God. Send somebody else, anybody but me. He, he's actually having the nerve to say to God that he made, he's made a mistake. Real, real brilliant, don't you think? But you know what? There are times when God will send us right back to the very people or situation that we're running from. Maybe he's calling you to reach... to reach out to drug addicts or alcohol addicts because you've been there and you know what they're going through. Maybe he's calling you back into that neighborhood to reach out to people. And, and you're scared to go because you don't want to get caught up in that lifestyle. But God has plans for you. And if you submit to him and be willing to obey him and trust him, he can use you in mighty ways. And, and what God's doing isn't to be cruel, it's to show his power to us and to those who knew us before. They need to know Christ. That's why I posted Romans 10, 14, and 15 here. He says here, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom, in, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. That's what we're here for. How are they going to know unless somebody tells them, people? And also, something that Pastor Rob said, 
and and when I get the link, I'm gonna you know and post it. And and when you watch this link too, one of the things that that Pastor Rob was saying is about the fact that we need to learn that sometimes with these things when he calls us, that we have to fully trust him and know that God is enough. And most of all, something to remember where we it's better to be where I don't want to be, but be with God than to be where I want to be without God. And you know, I think of when I was when I heard this, I, I was thinking about the statement that Grace, the character and God's not dead too, said about I'd rather stand with God and be judged by the world than to stand with the world and be got, judged by God. And I think that very much applies to it. And basically, God ultimately says, now go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. Ultimately, Moses runs out of excuses. And God just says, get your button gear and go. I'm going to be with you, and I'm even going to give you your brother Aaron to help you out. He'll be your mouthpiece. He's been longing to meet you. And I think that, 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 really mu I think that must have pleasantly shocked Moses. Who knows if he knew that he had a brother. And I think when we run out of excuses, we realize that God will use us just as we are because he'll empower us to do all that he asks. Because bottom line, we're allowing it to be 100% God and 0% us. And, and that really got me. I, I'm telling you, it really, really, really got me. And, and there's more to this that I want to share. I want to do this in a couple of parts. I want to share the rest tomorrow. And what I urge you to do this week is read Exodus chapters 3 and 4, as well as the book of Jonah. And also, while you're at it, I also encourage you to read, and I know this may seem interesting, but I think this is another area where we have a tendency to not want to listen to God or, or uh, not want to do what he wants us to do by testing him because, we, because again, we think he's made the wrong choice. Like we're, we're telling God he's making a mistake, please. Read Judges chapter 7 about Gideon. But last but very not least, this is what I urge all of you today. Pray this prayer. I'm going to post, I'm going to, Post it on here too. And and pray this this week. And this is something that's been going in my mind. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be determined to pray as well. God, instead of asking you to do something for me, I'm asking what I can do for you. Here I am. Send me. Make that the prayer of your heart this week. Ask God. You can do it in the morning when you get up and you're having your time with the Lord and at night before you go to bed and, and, and even during the day just ask God this and if he's telling you something right now you better listen listen and, 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 and allow him to work through you you know that this was something that Pastor Rob was saying and it's been burdening me because I want I've, I've been feeling like I, I'm not useful for the Lord I know He's given me Cat's Bridge to rescue, but I, I, I just feel like more. And maybe he wants, maybe he's going to use me through Cat's Bridge to rescue. And I pray that if you're in something right now, or, or if God's calling you to something, and you're resisting it, don't. Humble yourself before the Lord and be willing to obey him. Don't be like Jonah and run away. And don't be like Moses and make excuses. Say, just be willing to say, here I am, Lord. Go ahead and send me. And don't be afraid of what it might be. He may be sending you somewhere out of your comfort zone. Who knows? Maybe it could be to somebody across the street from you, next door to you. It could be maybe, you know, tomorrow as you're celebrating Memorial Day. Maybe he's called, you know, maybe there's somebody that's hurting that really needs to hear that, some, that God loves them, that Christ died on the cross for them. And it may be God sending you in that area so I, I'm, I'm just challenging you to be willing to pray that prayer and to say here I am Lord send me 
use me. Make yourself willing to be available to him. Are you? I've got to get going for now, and I'm going to put. I'm going to post uh, more of this tomorrow. But I wish you all a wonderful evening, and I also wish you all a, a really wonderful Memorial Day. And I wish to say thank you, and I, to all that have served our country, and to, to, to say thank you to those who have given their lives, their everything for us, because that's what Christ did for us on the cross. Bye for now, and have a wonderful Memorial Day, and awesome cookouts. Bye.